Welcome to Friday Night Smackdown's review with me, all things wrestling, joined as always by Dave from Crashstream Productions. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing all right. Good. And KK416, how are you today, man? Doing good. Well, this was uh, this was actually not a bad episode of Smackdown. To be fair, I enjoyed it. It was decent. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Unfortunately, we saw highlights from Elimination Chamber for, like, the first, like, ten minutes of the show, which was kind of a bit... I kind of just wish they did the talking segment and then did the, like, pre-after. Like, we literally watched it a few days ago. I don't need you to recap everything for me. Uh, then Roman goes on to talk about, obviously, what happened at Elimination Chamber with... Beating Daniel Bryan and Edge and making an official Mania match. And Daniel Bryan then comes out and says, Dude, what's wrong with you? You were a coward. You did the cowardly move at Elimination Chamber. I went through five other men and started in the Elimination Chamber. And you came down and beat me immediately after. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove that you are uh, great. You need to create your own legacy. You want to prove the doubt is wrong. You need to face me one on one in a proper match. And Jey Uso then piped up and said, "You face me tonight, and if you win, you get to face Roman at Fast Lane." And the match was agreed. Yeah, yeah. I I thought that there was going to be some backlash from Roman towards Jey Uso for st- opening his mouth again, but he said, "Hey, as long as you you know, as long as you take care of business, it's all good." So apparently, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. In 2015, when we seen Roman versus Daniel Bryan, I would not mind seeing it again. No, it was a very, it was a good match if I remember in 2015. Yeah. Uh, we then go to the Mysterios versus Otis and Chad Gable. Uh, Otis managed to pick up the victory. Yeah, on an injured Rey Mysterio. Still, he beat Rey Mysterio. He, he had more tape around his ribs than he had ribs. <laughs> Not very hard, hard for the tiny guy, is it? <laughs> True enough, but still. Yeah. Yeah, overall, it was a not, not a bad match. I mean, the double 619 was pretty cool. <sighs> yeah, good uh, father and son bonding right there. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed the match. Otis is continuing to turn heel, so it's very interesting to see where this story leads us. Uh, we then go to Apollo Crews making his way to the ring. He's wearing a scarf for some reason, talking about being Nigerian, and African American, being royalty. Uh, looks like he's going to be taking like a posh person gimmick, and uh, you know, he's gonna. Pretty much, you know, represent his, like, heritage. Well, I, I appreciate that he wants to represent Couldn't help but notice that his accent also changed. Yeah. Once he said he was an African-American, his accent also changed. He's also wearing pants now. Yeah. He's pretty much pulling a Kofi Kingston, but let's see how long he's going to keep this accent for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Nakamura interrupted him and they had a match which Apollo Crews picked up the victory with the Olympic Slam. So he stole Kurt Angle's finisher. Interesting. I'm fully, be- I'm fully behind heel of all. Problem is, yes. Nakamura shouldn't lose to these type of like matches. Like He just turned face and it was the right call. Yeah, I know. Uh, we then go to Tamina versus Liv Morgan. Tamina looked like a beast in this match and picked up the victory. Yeah. Doesn't make Liv look very good, though. Personally, I think putting the Riot Squad back together was a bad idea. Yeah. But Liv was yeah. better on her own. I missed the, the sexy out- outfit that they had her wearing. Yeah. There was a bit of leather and strapping, and that was about it. Wow. Yeah. We then go to the most important moment of tonight. Bianca Belair 
comes out to Darlis, who she will face at WrestleMania. Uh, she comes to the ring, tells us how long it has since she won, won the Royal Rumble for some reason, because I completely care. Uh, she then talks about life choices, and she said, choice is clear. Uh, Reginald then came out and said, um, like, why she should face each person. And then said you'll be a loser and started talking down to her and then Sasha came out and then more talking and then she, she, Bianca picked Sasha Banks, which we all knew she was going to do anyway. Yeah. Was this really a surprise to anyone? No. Were you surprised, Dave, when she picked um, Sasha? Not at all. I think we all literally expected this. Yeah. Uh, we then go to Baron Corbin and Sammy in the back. Uh, camera crew is like shooting, and Baron Corbin asked Sammy, Why are we actually teaming together? And Sammy said it was my idea. They might not get along, but they have great chemistry and they qualified for the Eliminated Chamber. They need to win, they can become tag team champions. With Sammy's ideas, strategic ideas, and Baron's, he hesitated and then said, Strength. Uh, they can be dominant and they can be the new. Uh, Tag champions. And then Baron's like, we could dominate the division working together, but do never, ever tell me what to do again. You know what? It was not a bad segment between these two. They, they kind of work together. Yeah. Put together. I like them. I get like a pinky in the brain vibe. Like one's just kind of zany and out there, and the other one's just like serious and way too down to earth. Yes. Corbin is pinky. Corbin is pinky. No. He'd be the brain. Corbin, he's brain. He's the serious, like hard, like judgmental one. Whereas Sami was... Zayn is literally zany and spontaneous and. Yeah. You all first think about it that. Pinky was smarter than Brain because Brain kept doing the same thing and failing every single time. Well, they, they, it says one is a genius, the other's insane. And the true definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. That so you tell brain. me who's insane. That would be Brain. Yeah, I guess. Do it, and cause and the one time that they let Pinky try, he did, he almost had it done because Brain then takes over when he sees that he was succeeding and fucks everything. Yep, Pinky is the hashtag smartest. Uh, yeah, we then get a good tag team match. Dawkins and Montez Ford, Street Profits facing Zayn and Bob Corbin. Honestly, if if they just drop the stupid smoke overhyped gimmick that they have with the Street Profits, they would get really far. Because they're wrestling in this match proves it. They are a solid tag team. I think they need to be like you. I, I like them just the way they are. Don't change them even a little bit. Yes, please, change them. Uh, the winners was uh, the Street Profits. Uh, Corbin and Zane had a little bit of a words after the match. Yeah, Corbin basically said that they lost because of Zane and his stupid gamma people. Yeah. Stupid camera. We then go to Seth Rollins uh, making his way to the ring. Um, Cesaro makes his way out. He starts talking about how Seth, uh, Cesaro needs to get that killer instinct. He can help him with that. He can become unstoppable. He can reach for the brass ring and break the glass ceiling if him and Seth get together. And then Seth just did two swings. Take it. Uh, Seth got swung around like a little uh, bastard. I'm not gonna lie, it was so it was so big of a swing that Seth Rollins' jacket flew off. I honestly could have watched that for hours. That was great. Yeah, um, it was a really good segment. That the fact that he held the mic, I was like, wow. How the hell did he keep a hold of the mic when he was getting swung around? I don't know. It was a really good segment. Cesaro looked very strong in this. I guess Cesaro I, I, didn't want to have... um, Cesaro champion by the end of the year. I guess Cesaro didn't want to embrace the vision. Clearly not. 
Great promo from Seth, great attack at the after. And then we go to the main event of the evening. Daniel Bryan, Jey Uso. Daniel gets a title shot if he beats Jey Uso. And you know what? Double count out, which is not what I expect. Seems kind of lazy. Yeah, the match ended in a draw, so not a DQ. I think Bryan versus Roman for Fastlane is pretty much locked in. Yeah, it's going to happen. We already know it. I expected this to be before the Rumble. Hmm. Yeah, after the match, Brian puts Uso into a label lock. Roman attacks Brian, um, hits a spear and guillotine on Brian. So Roman stands tall at the end of the night, which we all knew we probably would have. I was expecting an edge attack. Yeah. yeah maybe next week. I I kind of was too. Like uh, while Roman was standing over top of Daniel, just to have uh, Edge come out and spear him, even if he gets super kicked by Jey Uso. I guess yeah, it's going to end on a Roman strong Roman. moment. Yeah, but Vince is not going to do that to his golden boy Roman. I'm surprised they did it in freaking Elimination Chamber, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Well. That is all the time we have for this review today. Check out Dave. The link is in the description. Go subscribe. Crack Screen Productions. Get... Yes. Let's get him 500 subscribers by the end of the month, which is like tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. By the end of March, let's get him over. Let's get him 600 subscribers by the end of March. That's 120 subscribers. I think we can do it. Think we can? I believe in everyone. Uh, but yeah, go check out my live reactions channel. The links in the description as well because of stupid copro, which I'll probably end up keeping that channel up because it's doing very well and I'm massively enjoying it. But yes, uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, and we shall catch you all later. Bye. Peace. Bye.